Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim This is the presentation for the lecture 3 in the nervous tissue. Uh, our objectives today are five. You have to define and describe the ganglia. You have to compare between two types of ganglia, spinal ganglia and sympathetic ganglia. You have to describe the stages of degeneration and regeneration in the peripheral nerve. You have to classify neuroglia, very important. You have to describe and compare the different types of neuroglia, very important topic. First of all, what is a ganglion? Ganglion, it is a collection of two things outside the CNS. What are these two things? The two components of the nervous tissue, which is the nervous cell and the glial cell, but should be outside the CNS. So these three words should be highlighted in your uh, book. A uh, second feature of a ganglion, it is uh, supported by connective tissue. So it is a collection of nervous cells and glial cells outside the CNS supported by connective tissue. We have two types of ganglia. Ganglia present along the cranial and the spinal nerves called craniospinal. And ganglia, which are autonomic ganglia, we have two types, sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia. Here we have the spinal ganglion, which is a dorsal root ganglion. And here we have the sympathetic or autonomic ganglia here. So we will describe these two types of ganglia, the spinal and the autonomic, either sympathetic or parasympathetic, they are the same. Also the cranial and the spinal ganglia, they are the same. So we will make a comparison between the ganglia in the spi in spinal cord, spinal ganglia, and the autonomic ganglia. Uh, this is the picture of the spinal ganglia under the microscope. You will notice these are the bodies of the neurons. And here we have the axons stained blue, uh, brown by the silver of these neurons. So we have in this slide the cell body and the nerve fibers. Uh, this is the spinal ganglia. This is the spinal. Here it is the sympathetic or the parasympathetic, they are similar. Here we have the cell bodies here and also we have uh, the nerve fibers. Try to make a comparison between the spinal and the sympathetic. From this picture, what are the differences? I can comment on the arrangement. In the sympathetic, they are scattered. In the spinal, they are present in groups or rows, group, 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 and so on. But here they are scattered. Also here, the cells are of different sizes, large, medium, and small. But here they are all uniform in size, they are all small. These are the features that can appear from the, uh, these uh, photos. And this is the whole diagram. What are the differences now? We will look for the capsule. Here we have the capsule of connective tissue surrounding the ganglia. You can notice that in the case of the spinal ganglia, it is thicker compared to the sympathetic. If a sympathetic have a thinner capsule, but the spinal have a thicker capsule. Uh, then we have uh, another difference, which is the blood vessels. You can notice here plenty of blood vessels. Here, blood vessels, a lot of blood vessels. Here, you cannot see a lot of blood vessels, just a few blood vessels. So, we have a difference in the blood vessels. Number three, the arrangement. As I told you before, here the arrangement in the form of groups or rows. But here, they are scattered all through the section. Then we will comment on five points starting with S. So we have finished the capsule, thicker, thinner. We have finished the blood vessels, more, less. Then the arrangement in groups and rows, here they are scattered. 
as regards the five S, the first S is the size. Here in the size, I have to convince to achieve two points for the size. Here we have uh, the three sizes, the large, the medium, and the small. But here they are all of uniform in size. This is for the size. Uh, number two in the size also, more or less uh, these cells are larger than these cells. So size here are larger, and here we have smaller. Here we have different sizes. Here we have a uniform size. Then another S. Another S also will cover two points. The shape. Here the shape of the cells in the spinal ganglia is the globular. It is the unipolar have taken in the types of neurons. So the surface here is smooth. No dendrites arising from the surface because it is the unipolar it has one process t-shaped no dendrites on the surface so here as it got the shape they are unipolar but here they are multipolar stellate in section so this is as regard this the shape another thing in the shape that actually does not appear in the section here when the axon arises or when the process arises, it forms a curve or a globular structure before it uh, descends down. This structure is called glomerulus. Here, the axon extends straight from the start. No curve, no globular structure formation. So, we have here a glomerulus. But here, here in the spinal, we have glomerulus. Here, we don't have a glomerulus. Then, the number eight also by the S. Here, they are separated by the myelinated nerve fibers. But you cannot see the myelin in the section. In this section, is stained with the hematoxin that you see. This is a theoretical difference. But here, we have the separation by what? By the unmyelinated. Don't forget that the postganglionic fibers are devoid of the undershared. They are devoid of the myelin. So they are unmyelinated here. Number nine, satellite cells. Each cell is surrounded by neuroglial cells called satellite cells. Satellite cells here are surrounding a large size cell. So the number of satellite cells here are more. As regards these satellite cells in the sympathetic uh, ganglia, the satellite cells are less in number, of course, because they are surrounding a smaller cell. Not only that, but they are also interrupted by the dendrites, which emerge from the surface of this uh, multipolar stellate cell. So here they are larger in number, here smaller in number. Not interrupted, interrupt. Then, we will move now to the last point, which also starts by the letter S, the synapse. Here in the spinal ganglia, here we have uh, no synapse. Why? Because the cells here in the dorsal root ganglia or the spinal ganglia has this T-shaped process, the peripheral branches, taking the impulse from the receptors and the impulse will pass here and enters the spinal cord so we have no synapse she brings everything by its own nothing will be uh, sent to her by another neuron but in case of the sympathetic we have a preganglionic and we have a post ganglionic so we have a synapse here so in the sympathetic there is a synapse no synapse in the spine now this is the glomerulus this is the curve which form a rounded globular structure this curve it is called glomerulus folded like this like a glomerulus and here it is straight this is the total picture of the differences between the spinal and sympathetic and it is a very important short question very important how you will study it you will study it by three points a b 
C. I have three points. A, B, C. A arrangement, B blood vessels, C capsule. And then we have five points with the letter S. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six. Why there are six, I will tell you now. As regards the size, it includes two points. As regards the shape, it includes two points. Yibahina one, two, three. This is the third S, the first S, second S, third S, fourth S, and finally the fifth S. Yibahina, the differences can be studied by ABC 5S. Two of the S's have two points, the size and the shape. The function, it is a physiology. No, it's important to be mentioned in the histological differences, or not needed at all in the histological differences between the spinal and the sympathetic. Now, we will move to another point in our lecture, which is the degeneration and then the regeneration. Here, the nerve is cut at this location. Trauma, okay? We will have two types of degeneration. Actually, there are uh, three types, but two of them like each other, which is the uh, degeneration which takes place at the site of the injury and the degeneration which takes place in the cell body and the proximal part of the uh, axon. So this type, it is a type called retrograde or traumatic degeneration. Retrograde, retrograde, passes in a retrograde direction, and uh, it is also called traumatic, retrograde or traumatic. The second type of degeneration, in the old classification, they mentioned that traumatic at the site of the injury and then the retrograde. But now we collectively say that we have a retrograde or traumatic in this area. And another degeneration in the distal part of the fiber, which is called Valerian degeneration. So, so we have retrograde and Valerian. Retrograde will occur in this area and Valerian will occur in this area. What will happen in the retrograde or traumatic degeneration? In the retrograde or traumatic degeneration, in order to study it, you have to organize your information. How? You have to comment on the following points. The nasal bodies, highlight this word, the shape of the cell and the size of the cell, nucleus, Golgi, mitochondria, neurofibers, and lysosomes. The first thing to be mentioned in the changes in the retrograde is the disappearance of the nasal bodies, which are basophilic in staining. So, the first sign of degeneration, their disappearance. A condition called chromato means color. color. Chromato means a color. Lysis means disappearance. So, there is a disappearance of the basophilic uh, staining or the basophilic structures of the nasal pods. Obitaly, has a decrease in the basophilia. But the first sign is the chromatolysis which is a disappearance of the nasal bodies with a decrease of the basophilia in the cytoplasm of the pericardium type. Second comment will be on the shape and size of the cell. What will happen? It will be swollen. And when it is swollen, it will lose the dendrites. Obitaly, it will be globular. No dendrites arising from it, so it will be globular type. But the kida el hagatal han olha everything mentioned now will disappear or will be damaged except one. The nucleus will migrate, now it is bad globular, and the nucleus, it was what? It was in the center, it was achromatic with prominent nucleolus, it was a, a larger size, it will decrease in size and migrate to a peripheral position. The first, first it was here. It will migrate to a preferred position and it will be dark, very small. As regards the Golgi, disappear. As regards the mitochondria, disappear. As regards the neurofibers here, the neurofibers that were supporting 
the shape of the cell here, these neurofibers will be fragmented into smaller pieces. No more support for the shape of the cell or maintenance for the shape of the cell. But the only organelle that will be increased will be the lysosomes. Why? To eat all these um, products of degeneration. Here, this one will increase. All of the other things are showing drop in the function except the lysosomes. So we will see now how to uh, describe these changes in the retrograde degeneration. First of all, the disappearance of the nasal granules. اللي احنا بنسميه ايه؟ chromatolysis. Disappearance of the color, the blue color that was here, disappear. This is the first sign. After that, the cell here will be swollen with the loss of dendrites. So it will be globular. يبقى هنا shape of the cell. With size of the cell, it will be swollen and it will be rounded due to the loss of the dendrites. This is number two. Number three, the nucleus, brain of the cell. It will be smaller, peripheral, darkly stained. It was achromatic with prominent nucleus. Now it is very dark, inactive nucleus, about to disappear. So this is the searching. Then, with the Golgi and the mitochondria. Here will disappear, and the neurofilaments, you know, neurofilaments that he will be fragmented. Our neurofibrins will be fragmented, and the thing that will increase so much will be the lysosomes. Here, the lysosomes are one, two, three, four. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why? To eat the Products of this degeneration. يبقى هنا لما نرجع تاني لل changes in the retrograde, we will have the following: number one, chromatolysis; number two, the size and shape; number three, the nucleus; number four and five, the disappearance of Golgi and mitochondria; number six, it is the fragmentation of the neurofibers; and number seven. The market increase in the eaters in the cell. Then we have the changes in the Wallerian degeneration, which will be in the distal part of the axon. In this degeneration, we will comment on three components only. Why? Because in the nerve fiber, I don't have except three structures: axon, myelin, and joint or neurolem. The axon. What is present in the axon? We have in the axon the neurofibers also and the microtubules and the mitochondria. These are the components in the axon. What will happen? The neurofibers will be swollen. And this will give the, will give the axon the beaded appearance, beaded. And then these beads will be separated to be formed segmented. And finally, It will be granular. يبقى هنا أول حاجة the first thing the neurofibers will be swollen, giving a beaded appearance. زي سبحة الصلاة كده beaded. Then segmented, then granular. طيب what will happen for the myelin sheath? The nodes of Ranvier will be widened. هتزيد جدا the nodes هتوسع. ليه لأن the segments بتأثر. These segments or internodal segments. will be degenerating, will be shortened, and fermentation takes place in these segments with the disappearance or the lysis of the fat to fatty acids. So they are called fermentation chamber. يبقى هنا عندي ادي هنا كانت دي segment وكان في هنا node of Ranvier و segment تانية. هنا أصبح ايه? The nodes of Ranvier هنا will be widened وهنا اهو يبقى السيجمنت دي بعدت والسيجمنت دي بقى يبقى اذا هنا حصل ايه؟ widening of the nodes of Ranvier. طب what will happen to the internodal segment؟ ادي دي internodal segment ودي internodal segment. هيحصل ايه؟ lysis to the fat to fatty acids and they are called now fermentation chambers 
اوض التعفن او اوض التحلل فيرمنتيشن اوض التحلل فيرمنتيشن تشامبرز يبقى ده اللي حصل في المايلين طيب دول this is dropping down and this is dropping down but on the reverse we have market proliferation in the Schwann cells they will proliferate they are proliferating increasing in number and they are trying to make a tube to connect to the proximal part of the nerve fiber يبقى هنا عايزة تعمل أنبوبة في عشان تتصل بالبروكسيمال بارت اللي هو من النيرف فايبر يبقى اذا هنا شي از تراينج تو ميك ا تيوب اور ا كولم فور ذا جروس اوف نيو اكسون فروم ذا بروكسيمال بارت وي هاف ديسكاست بيفور يبقى اول از داون اكسبت ذا جفان سيلز طيب ذيس از ذا بيكتشر وات هابنز ان ذا اكسون ان ذا مايلين اند ان ذا جوان هير از ذا كات And this is the retrograde, and this is the valerian. Uh, first of all, neurofibers in the axon will swell, giving beaded appearance, then segmented appearance, then granular appearance. Now, what will happen in the myelin? The myelin sheath here, the widening of the nosovranvi, shortening of the internodal segment. The internodal segments here are degenerating. There is a lysis of the fat to fatty acids, and they are called, instead of uh, internodal segments, they are called now fermentation chambers. Now, what will happen for the Schwann? Here, take care. There is one Schwann, one and one. Now, this one, now, new one, and a new one also here. So, they are plurifying. Look at this picture. There is a market proliferation for the H1 cells. They want to reach the proximal part. Here they cut. They want to reach this proximal part to form a tube to allow the growing or regenerating axon coming from the uh, proximal part to enter in this uh, column. So, what are the stains by which you can diagnose the degeneration in the nerves? Of course, three Very expected stains. Silver for what? For two things: neurofibrils and Golgi. Osmotic for what? For myelin sheaths. Basic stain as hematoxin for what? Nasal bodies. Ibahena. These are three simple stains to be studied for the demonstration of degeneration. Type. After this degeneration have taken place, we have studied the retrograde and the Valerian. Retrograde or traumatic. And the Valerian. After that, there will be a regeneration by the help of uh, actually two cells will help us to regenerate. One of them have been mentioned now, which is the Schwann. Schwann is proliferating. She is trying to make a new column for the growth of the neurofibers in the axon in this uh, uh, cut part. Type how the regeneration will take place. Regeneration is. Performed by two workers, two important workers, macrophages, it are phagocytic cells, and the Schwann cells. The macrophages will uh, will provide us with two important functions. They will remove all the debris, all these dead elements, all are should be removed. You have to clean the area for the new uh, growing uh, cells. So this is the first. Uh, function after that or during that it secretes interleukin 1 what will do this interleukin 1 it will stimulate what stimulate one cell why to secrete substances to promote nerve growth the axon it here now the one cell not only it profit it produces substances to stimulate growth promoters to stimulate the growth of the nerve fiber which was cut now Yebahena, the macrophage has two functions cleaning the area and secreting interleukin 1 interleukin 1 will affect the schwann cell stimulating it to secrete gross factors for the growth of the nerve Tab schwann cell also will produce by proliferation a column as i have said before a column to 
reach the proximal part now it is trying to regenerate and it is producing new axon fibers to pass to the this column by the help of the growth promoters factor secreted by the Schwann. So the Schwann proliferate to form a column and it stimulates the growth of the axon type. This regeneration is very efficient when the fibers and the columns are directed to the proper place. What is the meaning of that? Here we have in the nerve a lot of nerve fibers, not one nerve fiber, we have a lot. You may have sensory and motor fibers at the same nerve, of course. Any spinal nerve has, it is a mixed nerve, have a sensory and motor together in this uh, uh, structure, the peripheral nerve. When the uh, neurolemmal cheese here, if the neurolemmal cheese here proliferate to form a column, that will pass in a wrong direction. It was here, it should, it should grow in this direction to allow the growth of the axons of the sensory neuron. Now it grows in a wrong dire direction and passes to the motor neuron, which is very close to each other. Now no regeneration. This will not, yeah, if it grows here and this will have another axon of another function, so no regeneration takes place. So it is not efficient unless the Schwann cells are directed to the proper place. Should passes here, not there. So here, oh, is an henna. If the Schwann cell passes in a wrong direction, no regeneration. It only, the regeneration takes place when I pass to the correct direction to join my proximal stump or my proximal part. Type, here, to summarize, what happened in regeneration in the peripheral nervous system? Because I don't have Schwann in the peripheral nervous, in the central nervous system. We have two important cells. Macrophages will produce interleukin-1 that will stimulate the Schwann to produce gross factors. The Schwann will produce, in addition to the gross factors, it is a function, it will form by a proliferation a column to uh, allow the passage of growing axon from the proximal part to pass through. Uh, some clinical applications are very nice to know. Uh, sometimes when there is a large gap between the uh, proximal part and the distal part, as in case of amputation, here actually the distal part is not present, or, or it is present but there is a large gap. There is extensive proliferation in the proximal part so that it causes the formation of this swelling. This swelling is called neuroma. Neuroma. It causes spontaneous pain. He feels like, like something is hurting his uh, uh, feet. He feels his feet although it is not present. So this is a condition called neuroma when the patient uh, tells you that I feel with my my uh, lower part which is amputated, I feel it. This is due to the presence of neuroma, extensive growth from the proximal stump, uh, trying to reach the distal part, but there is no distal part. This will form a swelling called neuroma which causes spontaneous pain. Another application is that the disappearance of the myelin in demyelinating diseases like uh, multiple sclerosis or disseminated sclerosis, this will cause a slowing in the uh, speed of nerve impulse transmission and this of course will and even may lead to loss of nerve impulse transmission and this will of course will affect the condition, the nervous condition of the patient. Multiple sclerosis or disseminated sclerosis, here there is a loss of the myelin, this will cause a slowing or in the nerve impulse transmission till it lost. Another application, the nerve cells actually not divide. We have said that they are having no centrioles, but the neuroglial cells that will be studied now having a centrioles, so they can divide and produce tumors. So the tumors in the brain are not de developing from the nerve cells, they are developing from the neuroglial cells. 
uh, neural stem cells. Very recently, uh, they found that uh, some stem cells are present in certain region of the brain. This is the area of the hippocampus in the brain. They found that they have neural stem cells. These, are, these stem cells are trying. Uh, they are trying now to use them in order to uh, uh, inject area in which the nerve cells are degenerated so that uh, they can uh, form new neurons and help in uh, uh, relieving the symptoms of paralysis or something like that. So, here we have reserve cells that under stimulation, certain uh, factors are given, they can replace the lost neurons. They are found actually in the hippocampus and they can be mature to form a, a mature, these are immature now, and then they can reach maturity under uh, giving them uh, uh, gross factors and they can be mature nerve cells and they can perform the normal function. Now we will move to a very important point with the, which is the neuroglia. We have said before that the neuroglia are 10 times more than the neurons. The neuroglia actually are classified into our different types of neuroglia. We have uh, six types of neuroglia, but the first three are the neuroglia proper and the other three are outside the proper group. Yani typical, yani less, less importance than the uh, previous one. هنا هنقول إن إيه؟ إن الأستروسايتس الأوليجودندروجلايا الميكروجلايا هم دول الموست إمبورتنت مش معنى كده إن دول نوت إمبورتنت لا إمبورتنت بس دول ميجور فانكشن ليهم كبيرة قوي هنشوفها دلوقتي يبقى إذا هنا هنقول إن عندي في الأستروسايتس أوليجودندروجلايا الميكروجلايا مهمين جدا as a short question أوكي؟ الأذر سيلز برضو مهم ممكن تيجي وممكن تيجي في الـ MCQ كمان وطبعا كل شيء يعني expected in the exam هنبدأ الأول بالـ major types which are the astrocytes, oligodendroglia and microglia Here as I have said before the microglia are numerous 10 times to the neuron and we will discuss them now First one is the astrocyte astrocyte and it has another name you have to remember both names macroglia or astrocytes macro means it is the biggest one it is the largest one so number one it is the largest from its name macroglia it is the largest one Lar and it has also the largest pale nucleus akbar nucleus and and it is very pale which means they are very active why they are called astro? Because they are star, like a star. A star means astro. This is the meaning of the word astro. They are star shaped with many long processes. Their processes are long processes. So they are called astrocytes because of their shape and they are called macroglia because of their size. And they have a very important type of intermediate filaments that have been taken in the cytology which are glial fibrillary acid protein glial fibrillary acid protein very specific in these cells and they will have some clinical importance as they can help us to diagnose tumors arising from this cell by demonstrating the glial fibrillary acid protein fibrillar acid protein so we can diagnose the origin of the tumor, which is the astrocyte. Uh, we have three points which should be comment on in all the cells. What about the centrioles? Present. So they are responsible for tumors. What about the origin? Of course, ectodermal in origin. What about their size? The uh, site, they are present in the gray matter and the white matter. So we have three points to be comment on in all the uh, neuroglial proper cells. The centrioles, the origin, and the site. Centrioles present or not, the origin is the gray and white matter. It's not in the gray and white matter, or in the same way. Type. Okay. But we have to know what are these functions. These functions are very important. Four important points. 
they are responsible for the nourishment of the queen, which is the neuron. How? They have processes that end by a feet like expansion. On the surface of capillary, they take the nourishment, the good things, and give these things for the neuron. So this nourishment of the neuron through these um, astrocytes. And also they form a blood-brain barrier. They form a barrier between the any harmful material in the blood and the queen, which is the neuron. They also responsible for support. They support the neuron. They also responsible for healing of any uh, injury in the nervous tissue by formation a fibrous tissue and they are, of course, which is a scar tissue. Fibrous tissue, it's a scar tissue. يعني النتبة. تمام؟ طيب. يبقى هنا هنبتدي نتكلم شوية على الفانكشنز دي. هنجد عندنا الآتي. هنا ادي طبعا هنا النارشمنت ادي هي موجودة وادي الفيت لايك اكسبانشن اللي قاعد على البلاد كابيلاريز and the other hand will supply the neuron the queen this is the neuron with the nourishment either the uh, axon or the body itself so this is the function the major function of the astrocyte طيب how the nourishment again here we have this is the astrocyte and these are the feet like process sticking to the wall of the capillary they take the good things here and deliver it to the neuron يبقى هنا طبعا وهنا برضو هنجد عندنا برضو another uh, one here this one feet like expansion and this is the body and they deliver the nourishment for the queen which is the neuron طيب the blood brain barrier these are the astrocytes with the feet like expansion over the base membrane of the blood capillary present in the nervous tissue. Any material which is very harmful, like this one, cannot pass through this barrier to reach the queen. What is the barrier? It is the barrier formed of the lining of the capillary and base membrane and the food plate of this astrocyte. Uh, recently, they found that these astrocytes secrete this base membrane, which is uh, a very strong uh, defense line in this barrier. So, these astrocytes are responsible to protect my queen, which is the neuron, from any harmful material in the blood vessel. So, they bring the good things and prevent the entry of the bad things. Type. The astrocytes are actually two types. This one which is called cytoplasmic and this one which is called fibrous. You have to know the differences between these two and they are very nice differences. Here this one, this one which is present in the gray matter. This is the one present in the gray matter here. This is the neuron. This is the neuron present in the gray matter. The neuron is brown in color. This one is the astrocyte present in the gray matter. They take the nourishment from the blood capillary and supply it to the neuron, the body in the gray matter. Type. We have another one which is present in the white matter. This one, this one. In this one, in the white matter, we don't have a pericardion. We have only the axons. This one, which is present in the white matter, takes also the nourishment from the blood and give it to the nerve fiber in the region of the nodes of Ranvier. They will give them the nourishment. So this one in the white matter is called fibrous. But this one, which is present in the gray matter, is called cytoplasmic. This will nourish the pericardium and this will nourish uh, the axon. What are the differences between the cytoplasmic and the fibrous? The cytoplasmic is related to the pericardium, so it is present only in the gray, while the fibrous is present in the white matter. So the astrocytes in general are present in both gray matter and white matter. But 
The type which is present in the gray matter is called the cytoplasmic. The, the part which is present in the white matter, which contains the nerve fibers, which are the axons with the myelin and the neural lemma, they are called fibrous astrocytes. Here the cytoplasm should be full of granules. Cytoplasmic is granular, but here the cytoplasm is fibrillar. يبقى هنا هيبقى عندي granules, لكن هنا هيبقى عندي fibers فيها. هنا البروسس بتاعتها are كتير, many, but short. العكس هنا, they are less, but long. هنشوف الكلام ده صح ولا لا. هنشوف هنا نرجع للصورة بتاعتنا تاني. ادي هنا السيتوبلازمك بتاعت. أنا كده عندنا هنا many processes but actually they are short but here we have few processes but they are very long شوف البروسس دي قد إيه very long يبقى إذا هنا هو هنجد عندنا إن ال 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 fibers have few processes but long on the contrary the cytoplasm have many processes and short here again another picture this is the gray matter. So what is present here? It is the cytoplasm. It has many processes, but short. They have granules in the cytoplasm. They are present in the gray matter. features here. Here they are present in the white matter. Here gray matter, here white matter. Here are granules, here are fibers. Here are many, but short branches. Here are a few, and you one, two, three, four, five. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it's an here, and the kitir, but short. Here, and you one, two, three, four, five. Here, less, but a long. Plus, here, a the manzar betana. Tab. Nigi baad keda khallas na keda the astrocytes. Tamam. Arifna the function betaita again nourishment, blood-brain barrier, and the support. And the healing by formation of scar tissue. Okay. Let's see the oligodendroglia. Oligo means few. Dendro means dendrites. If a glial cell having very few dendrites. If we here, we will start to talk about the features of the cell. دي, بالإضافة ل three common points that we will talk about in each one. هنا بقى ايه المميز لهذه السل؟ They are the most numerous in the white matter. Why? Because they form myelin sheaths in the white matter. يبقى اذا هنا we have don't have one in the white matter. So they are the most numerous cell in the white matter. And according to their name, no need for the study. According to their name, they have few dendrites or few processes. Okay? طيب. After that, they are intermediate in two things. They are intermediate في size ما بين الأسترو والميكروغلاي. They are intermediate في size will staining بتاع النيوكليي between the astro and the microglia. Type. They have centriosis so they can form tumors like the astrocytes. They are ectodermal like the astrocytes. They are present in gray matter and white matter like the astrocytes. And they are also of two types like the astrocytes. As regards the two types of the oligodendrocytes, we have one type which is present in the gray matter here. And here it is um, related to the pericarion, the body of the nerve cell. And they are surrounding this body like a satellite. So they are called satellite oligodendrocytes. Another one is present in the white matter. Here, this is the gray and this is the white. Here in the white matter, they are surrounding the axons arising from the nerve cell in the gray matter. They are surrounding the axons and they are forming many segments of the myelin sheaths on many axons. And we have said before, these may reach from 10 to 60 segments. Uh, so this one, is, which is present in between the fibers, it is called, or it is named, enter, which means in between, fascicular oligodendrocyte. Fascicle means bundle. So these are the nerve fibers forming bundles. So they are present in between them. They are called interfascicular oligodendrocytes. 
Here you can see the myelin sheath formed by the oligodendrocyte, which is type interfascicular, and they are forming many segments, as you see, on many axons. Again, the same picture. This is the oligodendrocyte, which is type interfascicular, which is present in between the nerve fibers. They are forming the myelin sheath by wrapping the axon by their process, not by their bodice, like that of the Schwann cell. Here, the process will form the wrapping around the uh, nerve fiber. And they form many segments on many axons. Now, what are the differences between the satellite, which surround the bodice of the nerve cell, and the interfascicular, which are present in between the nerve fibers? Very easy to mention the site. In case of the satellite type, they are present in the gray matter where the nerve cells are present, while the interfascicular, they are present in the white matter where the nerve fibers are present. So the second point, it is closely related to the pericardion of the neuron, but here it is present between the bundles of the axons. What is the function of the satellite type? It is responsible for the support of the nerve cell, while that of the interfascicular are responsible for the formation of the myelin sheath and accordingly the electric insulation, and they form many segments of myelin sheath on many axons from 10 to 60. Now, let's move to the third type, which is the mesoglia, or it has another name, microglia. These two names indicate two important features in this type. First of all, they are the smallest and the rarest glia cells. So they are called microglia, because they are the smallest. And also, they are the rarest type, what is the most common type in the white matter? It is the oligodendrocytes. Here it is the rarest type in all the, uh, as regard, comparing to all types of glial cells mentioned before, they are the rarest, then they are less in number than the astrocytes and oligodendrocytes, and they are also the smallest. They have uh, many short branches which are decorated by spines. Remember that the astrocytes have many long branches, but no spines. But this type have many short branches that have uh, some spines or spikes on these uh, branches. many but short branches with uh, spines. Type. They are not so active. They have do dark oval nucleus. And we will comment on the three common points as regards the centrioles. They don't have a centriole, so they will not form tumors at all. As regards the origin, not from the ectoderm as the previous two. They are from the mesoderm, so they are called mesoglia. A mesodigaia from the origin, which is the mesoderm. Microgaia from the small size. They are present as all types in the gray and white matter. What is the function of these cells? They are phagocytic cells. They phagocytose any harmful material present in the nervous tissue. They are phagocytic cells. And as regards the uh, the staining, they are stained by vital steam because they are phagocytic. So you, when we apply during the uh, living condition any stain, it will be recognized as a foreign body and will be phagocytosed and accordingly the cells will be stained by this uh, stain. So they are stained by vital stain, the stains which are given during the living condition to be diagnosed as a foreign body and engulfed, so they will stain this microglia. Now this is the picture of the microglia, it is the smallest, it has many but short branches decorated by these spines. Then, another picture also for the mesoglia, you can see they are present in the gray matter as well as in the white matter. Why? Because they are responsible for phagocytosis and the protection of the nervous tissue. So they can be stained by a vital stain. The, now we have finished the three major types. 
in the neuroglia and we will move now to the other types which are the ependymal cells, the satellite cells, the Schwann cells. The ependymal cells, they are present lining the cavities in the central nervous system. We have cavities in the brain, we have central canal in the spinal cord. These cavities are filled with fluid called CSF. These cavities are lined by cells called ependymal cells. These are the ependymal cells, cuboidal cells with a central rounded nuclei, and they are lining the wall of this cavity. And inside the cavity, we will have a fluid, which is the CSF. These are called ependymal cells. They are present in the cavities, present in the brain, as this one, as well as the cavity called central canal in the spinal cord. Then, in this picture, it's a very good picture. It uh, uh, collects most of the uh, cells mentioned before. Here we have the ependymal cell lining the cavities present in the brain filled with CSF. And they are responsible for the formation of this CSF. And here we have a cell which is forming foot-like expansion attached to the blood capillary. This is the blood RBC. So this one should be astrocytes or macroglia. Here it is attached to the neuron and also it is another type of it it is attached here to the here the feed process it is attached to the uh, nerve fibers the one which is attached to the neuron it is called the cytoplasmic astrocytes cytoplasm this is the cytoplasmic astrocytes when it is attached to the nerve fiber it is called uh, fibrous astrocytes but it is not uh, indicated or uh, presented here in the picture. So we have here the astrocyte. When it is attached to the body, it is cytoplasm. When it is attached to the uh, nerve fiber, it is uh, called, it is attached to the nodes of Ranvier, it is called the fibrous astrocyte. The second type seen here is this one, which is... Uh, forming myelin sheaths when present in the white matter. And when it is present around the nerve cell, it is uh, called satellite oligodendrocyte. So this one, it is the interfascicular between the bundles of the nerve fibers. This is the interfascicular oligodendroglia. And when it surrounds these uh, bodies of the pericardium, it is called um, the satellite oligodendroglia. Now, the third one, so we have now finished the astrocyte, the oligodendroglia, and finally we have the microglia. The microglia is present also in the gray matter and the white matter, and they are responsible for the phagocytosis. So these are the main three types in addition to the ependymal cell. What is the type of this cell? As long as it is attached to the capillary, so it is an astrocyte. Here it is uh, this one which is very small with multiple processes. It is the microglia or the mesoglia. This one which for myelin sheaths in the white matter, it is oligodendrocyte. Now, we have also other types of the neuroglial cells which are pl present in the peripheral nervous system. In reality, we have finished the four types which are present in the central nervous system, the astrocytes, the oligodendrocytes, the uh, microglia or the mesoglia. And in addition to the ependymal cells, we have two types also, but they are present in the peripheral nervous system. And we have uh, discussed them before. One of them is the Schwann cell, which surrounds the nerve fibers in the uh, peripheral nervous system and the satellite cells which surround the nerve bodies, nerve cell bodies in the ganglion. This is the Schwann cell and it shows you how it forms the wrapping for the axon, leaving the cytoplasm which is squeezed to the outside around the nucleus and the squeezing, this squeezing will cause 
will cause this squeezing will cause the fusion of the cell membranes okay this is the Schwann cell which is present in the peripheral nervous system uh, this is the Schwann and we have discussed the function of the Schwann as regards also not only the myelin sheath formation but also in the regeneration and insulation functions revise the functions of the Schwann cells now also we have the satellite cells which are present around the cell bodies in the ganglia either the spinal ganglia or the sympathetic ganglia and here they are large in number and continuous but here they are smaller in number and interrupted by the dendrites of the multipolar stellate in the sympathetic ganglia here the picture very nice picture for these satellite cells these are the nuclei of the satellite cells surrounding the cell body present in the spinal ganglia uh, this picture is very nice because you can see here satellite cells and here we have the Schwann cell satellite surrounding the cell and the Schwann surrounding the axon in the peripheral nervous system so these are the two types present in the peripheral nervous system satellite cells and Schwann cells form uh, uh, which form the myelin surround the neurons in the peripheral nervous system then six types four types in the central nervous system two types in the peripheral nervous system what are these types in the central nervous system we have the major types astrocytes oligodendrocytes mesoglia and the ependymal cell what we have in the peripheral we have the satellite and the schwann both are starting by the oscillator uh, we have to remember in the uh, major types of micro of um, uh, neuroglia as the astrocytes the oligodendrocytes and the mesoglia we have to remember the specific feature for each one either the size either the uh, number rare common and the shape and the number of the processes then we have to comment about the centriole the origin and the site as we have said before finally you should study the functions which are very easy in the three types now uh, take this question what is the most numerous in white matter what is the most numerous in white matter yes i hear you the oligodendroglia second question what is the largest cell yes it's a very easy question it is named by macroglia or astrocytes which as the other name for it it is macroglia so it is the largest one now what is the mesodermal very easy mesoglia as it is named upon its origin from the mesoderm it has another name microglia okay then what is the intermediate in size and in the staining of the nucleus and the size of the nucleus what is the intermediate yeah, you're not so dark nucleus not so pale it is a uh, intermediate position very nice i hear you i hear you it is the oligodendroglia type what is the largest and the most pale most pale means the most active and it is the largest yes it is the macroglia or the astrocytes macroglia or astrocytes okay here we have what is the intermediate size yes it is very nice the intermediate size and intermediate in the size of the nucleus and the staining it is the oligodendroglia type what is the smallest very easy the microglia or the mesoglia here for two types we have two names the astrocytes has two names the mesoglia has two names and what which what which cell which have few processes very easy oligo dendroglia of course type which cell uh, has um, many long processes many يبقى لا يمكن تكون الاوليجو طيب بعد كده لكن لونج اه لونج يبقى مش ممكن تكون الميزوجلايا يبقى لازم تكون الاستروسايتس فيري جود فيري جود Type. which one has many but short with spines the mesoglia of course or the microglia it has two names type 
And finally, we have finished this lecture. Thank you very much and best wishes for all of you.